Welcome back. Drew Lerner joining us for weather this weekend. Drew, we started talking about it last weekend on the show. Noah saying we are going to see La Nina make a kind of a quick exit and then El Nino could enter the picture this year. Some meteorologists saying, listen, actually La Nina is going to make a quicker exit than what even Noah is forecasting right now. But as you look at some of the dryness across the country right now, Drew, we are seeing some definite concerns. Is La Nina causing that? And what will that transition mean for the possible moisture in some of those areas? Yeah, you bet. There's actually two weather patterns playing out here. One is La Nina, and that is for sure influencing the drier tendency that we have across the central part of the United States. Uh, the other pattern is an upper wind flow pattern. It's part of the lunar cycle. It's favoring all, this, uh, all these cold surges into the eastern part of the North American continent. The two are working together so that uh, we have not been seeing good moisture fall in quite a bit of the country, actually. If you take a look at the soil moisture chart here, uh, most recent, you can see that in the plains, we have a lot of dryness that's out there, the west, central, and southwestern portions of the region. And these areas are not likely to get another good drink of water. I know we got a little break last week, but it's not going to come back again for a while. And even though the Midwest doesn't look too bad for this time of the year, uh, most of that area from Missouri and Iowa into Illinois and on over to Indiana, northwestern Ohio, they should all have saturated moisture at this point or saturated saturated soil at this point in time. Uh, so we are still in that uh, droughty environment. Well, Drew, as you look at then the situation today with that dryness, as we see La Nina make a potential quick exit, how quick do you think that will happen and what impact will that have on moisture? Yeah, the, uh, the, the La Nina is certainly in place right now. As you can see, uh, if you take a look at the equatorial region of the Pacific, you can see the ocean temperatures are all still cooler than usual. And they have to be about a half degree Celsius or colder uh, from normal in order to qualify for La Nina. So we definitely have a La Nina in place. If we take a look at the forecast chart, though, this is from the NOAA model. And the NOAA model is suggesting that we are going to see that rapid uh, change uh, towards uh, 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 an El Nino possibly by the time we get out to May. Now, unfortunately, with this particular forecast model, it has a bad reputation for making forecasts that verify in January. And if you go back the last two years, uh, it was predicting a La Nina event would occur uh, by May or June in each of those years, and the, the La Nina never showed up until we got to the fourth quarter. The same kind of problem is going to present itself here this year. I think the model is too aggressive with the warming. Uh, it is going to warm enough for La Nina to go away, but I don't think we're going to see El Nino before we get into the latter part of the third quarter and on into the fourth quarter of this year, which means that most of the U.S. and for that matter, most of the world's weather is not necessarily going to change real dramatically right off the bat. What this means for the U.S. is that uh, we will probably still have some dryness, though, all the way into spring across parts of the central U.S., uh, you can see that in some of the studies we've done here. These are analog years. Uh, three of the four years that I've got listed there are Enzo years just like this, where we go from a La Nina into a neutral Enzo conditions through the first part of summer, and then we go into a weak El Nino later in the year. And you can see the spring chart on the left-hand side here is suggesting more below normal precipitation across a big part of the, uh, the hard red winter wheat areas and some of the western corn belt. But conditions to the east get a little bit better, a little wetter. The Delta and the lower Midwest in particular, maybe a part of the upper Mississippi River Basin. When we get into summer, though, these analog years all kind of suggest that a wetter bias will evolve. We'll see a strong monsoon flow pattern and we'll see above average precipitation in the northern plains and portions of the Midwest. While the southeastern U.S. may fall back into more droughty conditions after getting a little bit of a break uh, in the spring season. So this uh, this change that's coming up, I think if we were to suddenly go into El Nino, the biggest difference that would take place is it would rain a little bit better in the plains and western Corn Belt than what you see here for the spring season. OK, so, I mean, we see La Nina today and you're saying if we do see this quick transition to El Nino, what does that mean for South America? Yeah, you know, South America up until now has not really been seriously influenced by La Nina. It, and that's a byproduct of the very weak uh, status of this La Nina event. And if you look at the soil assessment there in, uh, in Brazil and Argentina, you can see the moisture profile is really not too bad. Now, we are starting to dry out portions of Buenos Aires 
and some of the neighboring areas there in Entre Rios and southern Santa Fe, even southern Cordoba. And we do need to see some significant moisture in these areas. Just this week, we've started to see some of the computer forecast models trying to generate a La Nina-like ridge of high pressure over Argentina uh, as we go forward through these next 10 days. And if that happens, we will continue to dry down Argentina, but more so in the east rather than the south. And it will go ahead and spread a little bit into southern Brazil. But, you know, as far as La Nina events is concerned, this one has not brought much dryness to South America. And most of the South America crops up till now have been doing very well. If La Nina is going to dissipate in February, then it's going to probably start raining again in these drier biased areas. So I think that this short term bout of ridge development and drier biased conditions in Argentina and Brazil will not likely last long enough to have a big impact on the bottom line. All right, Drew Lerner, World Weather, such great um, insights this weekend into what we could be watching over the next coming months. Thank you so much, Drew. Well, for now, USDA had a big report, several big reports of this week, and it really sent shockwaves through the market as we talked about in news. But what were the biggest discrepancies and what were the biggest surprises that really shocked the market? We're going to talk about that with Jared Creed and Joe Vaklovic next. You're watching U.S. Farm Report. Trusted, timely, tradition. 